the Hot Rod Reverend website and uh, social media pages. Glad you tuned in. And if you clicked on this link or on this video, you're obviously interested in the Holly 4000. So let's talk about that uh, four barrel carburetor, commonly known as the teapot, haystack, or as some of us would say, the towering inferno. Secondary tubes and some other things aren't set straight. Uh, they are known to leak fuel and catch fire. But anyway, 1955 and 6 is certainly uh, Ford's carburetor choice uh, for their performance engines coming from the factory. And uh, everybody knows that uh, later on in 56, he had the power pack option to. Uh, Get a two four barrel manifold mounted camshaft heads and different things and then of course in 57 from the factory you had two four barrel set up and they used the poly 4000s as well so let's take a look at what uh this carburetor is like and just give you some tips on um, how to disassemble clean it check it out and then reassemble it and uh, go through some very brief tuning procedures. All right, welcome to uh, the Hot Rod Reverend's introduction to the Holly 4000. So this is a 55 model that we're working on. And um, you can see here ECK 9510T list uh, 1071-1. Uh, this base has been completely disassembled and cleaned. And uh, we've got some things prepped here. I want to talk to you about um, basically how I put these things together. Uh, a lot of guys think these Holly 4000s are tiring infernos and junk and scrap them, get rid of them and all of that, but they could really be made to uh, be a pretty good carburetor. Of course, Ford uh, won a lot of races in the 56 and 57 uh, with the 2.4 setups and uh, what they ran with these um, haystacks or teapots. Uh, first thing I recommend you do is this, um, put together a binder such as this, maybe use some uh, sheet protectors um, in there and um, all the uh, information uh, that's uh, online, that's free to download and get, do that. Obviously, um, use the instruction sheet that came with your carb kit, but uh, that's kind of minuscule compared to what you can get in the binder and some of the variants. Um, within the different uh, list numbers and model numbers and so on and so forth. Um, I always recommend that you get a good uh, array of tools, of course, uh, that you're going to use. Uh, that's always important and um, everything from maybe small picks to um, screwdrivers, um, obviously pliers, different things uh, such as that nature. You definitely don't want to get anything that you're going to over torque or uh, break some of these small parts. Um, one of the things I think it's handy to have, um, I've got this tool here. It's uh, basically a um, jet wrench. Uh, just the way this works, obviously, you can see with that head, I'm gonna grab a uh, jet real quick. This is actually, this brand here is, you can't see it there on the camera, but it's actually a proto. And uh, it says Los Angeles, USA. I don't know how old this thing is, but um, basically uh, the head there uh, fits on the jet and you can see that and whoops I guess I came out of focus there. Uh, you can see that there that's going to help you um, get that into the bore in your fuel bowl. Um, some guys may ask why is this so small and of course this is a very almost a wire like um, piece to help you torque it over. Uh, the reason this is small is so that you don't over torque it. Um, <laughs> Pretty sure sometimes I've taken uh, fuel bowls apart and some guy's been a gorilla with the jets and everything and broken off one of the ears or all of that. So, but um, another thing too I recommend, uh, use some mineral oil, very handy for the uh, O-rings. And um, I need some thread locker for this build because I'm gonna um, put the uh, butterflies back on the shaft here, both of these shafts. And then um, also use some silicone spray, uh, very handy to use for your gaskets, especially for um, that gasket on the top there. Really, that's really your main gasket that you have. Of course, you have a couple of small other ones, but 
on the top of the fuel bowl that sits there. Boy, that's very handy to um, be able to pick that up and to remove it uh, whenever you need to. So um, uh, tools uh, certainly need to be clean and your workspace needs to be clean. I think that's a given. But um, you can tell with these things, there is a bunch of small parts and uh, we're gonna get all this back together. Some of this we'll have on camera, other things we won't. But uh, let's go through some of the nuances real quick about uh, these teapots, these Holly 4000s, and uh, maybe some things that you need to be watching for when you put them back together. Holly 4000s didn't get the name Towering Inferno uh, by accident, that's for sure. There are some areas where they're prone to leak if you're not careful. Probably the uh, most well-known would be the secondary tubes in uh, 55, and they look like this. There's a set, obviously, and then they're going to come up from the base and uh, either side of the fuel bowl there. Um, O-rings uh, held or uh, really secured by small washers. You can see a couple right there on the base and then the fuel bowl lid uh, up top here. Um, those four washers need to be staked. And of course, uh, these O-rings are really all that sealing uh, these tubes um, to the base and to the fuel bowl lid. Uh, these things dry out or you don't get these staked exactly right and um, you'll be prone to have leaks. Uh, the other area is really uh, something often overlooked, but um, this piece here basically has two O-rings. You're going to have two larger O-rings in your kit. Uh, they're going to go uh, right inside that channel there, uh, top and bottom, and then this is going to fit right down in that bore, and then um, the fuel bowl feed will fit on top of that, and uh, it's located right here. You double check that there's nothing that's going to cut your O-ring. Um, some guys, they're not careful, they just jam it down in there and you know, slice your O-ring on one of these sharp edges here, maybe... Um, the fuel bowl itself. I always encourage you to use a little bit of mineral oil. That is one of the tools of the trade here that I use um, for these O-rings. And um, obviously I think it goes without saying too with your kit, make sure you get a kit that uh, is ethanol compliant uh, with its O-rings and uh, the needle and seat and all of that. But um, this is one of the main areas here beyond the secondary tubes and um, those O-rings being staked down, the two O-rings here. Matter of fact, I think if you look on YouTube and look up some videos, you're going to find that there are some guys that have really kind of um, made a video where that's leaking right there. And um, prone to do so, it's just secured. And uh, you don't want to force that down too far. And obviously, you don't want to uh, leave it too proud. But uh, you go to the halfway point there. Um, should be pretty simple to do. I've never had them leak on me, but uh, I don't know. Uh, I do know that that's one of the things that guys complain about. Um, one of the things here, I, maybe not so much prone as far as fuel leaking, but the fuel bowl itself and to make sure that your cover uh, fits well. You do want to inspect and make sure that your cover um, is square and that it's flat. You see this surface here. Some guys are get a little happy and they'll over torque uh, the four uh, machine screws that hold down the lid and then you'll get warpage and uh, that's not good that one there obviously fit very well with its tolerances I know the gasket makes up some of the difference but um, it's really not what the gasket's for um, another area that sometimes it's prone to leak to be honest with you is just right out here um, this is the this is the stud that goes through, let me pick one up here, goes through your fuel bowl and what that's going to do, that's going to secure your um, float. It's really just the, the hinge there, um, the pin that your float hinge rides on. And um, it's good to do something with these threads here, seal them just a little bit. Uh, that'll be handy. You don't need much uh, for sure, but... Um, you know, uh, it's always good to use. And then uh, the next place uh, prone to leak, um, the needle and seat here, um, 
this is a 55 model. This is a 55 bowl, but uh, 54s, I think the EBYs, and um, even a lot of the ECKs. I think I may have even seen an ECZ or two. Maybe it was leftover fuel bowl from earlier. But um, you see how this is threaded. And this is going to fit down into this board there where there's threads. And this will secure um, the seat with a gasket here um, to the fuel bowl. And of course, uh, the needle's gonna ride up from underneath of it. But um, early, earlier models, um, they were smooth, smooth bore. Maybe I can grab one of those fuel bowls and uh, show it to you where the bore is smooth and the way it was um, kept seated was there's actually a spring uh, from the back side that kept it um, kept that against the fuel bowl kept it sealed and that was not a good design uh, there's I believe there's companies that even make kits that will um, thread uh, your, your smooth board there in your fuel bowl uh, to fix that problem so that is one area prone to leak another uh, area prone to leak maybe not so much a fuel leak although this will um, happen with the presence of fuel is um, right through the uh, bores for the throttle shafts. Uh, make sure that yours is not um, worn out where it's oblong uh, when it sits there and it rides uh, in its bore. Uh, if it's sloppy, uh, they can cause a vacuum leak and then um, fuel, can, fuel can seep out of it after you shut the vehicle down. Uh, that's another area that it can leak as well. So um, the main the main issue though with leaks is the secondary tubes. You got to make sure that you get these small washers staked um, with these O-rings here and that your secondary tubes, um, make sure you, you kind of deburr those. Take some 600, 800 sandpaper and uh, go around uh, the edges there uh, where it's going to fit into and um, Go right down into your board there. This this should be a, a snug fit. Should be tight by any stretch of the imagination, but it ought to be one where you can you can tell that it's um, that O ring there is tight um, all the way around your um, secondary tube. Uh, can't stress that enough how important that that is. Just a quick word: if you're um, doing some work where you're going to put the butterflies back in you disassembled everything uh, you do want to slide these in with the right orientation um, obviously but when you do so um, you want to make sure that when it's completely closed that these butterflies seal um, don't tighten anything down until you can tell from this side or a little bit low so I need to adjust that a little bit but uh, you want a complete seal when you close the butterflies. And then when you got that, and, and you'll know when you can fill in the bore, you can see it, um, you can get a light from underneath of it. That's always handy as well, uh, shine up from the bottom. And then when you do that, what you're gonna do is hold that in position, then go ahead and take your screws. I've got some thread lock over here that I'm gonna use and um, secure the butterflies back to the shaft, so. Uh, a little tricky, but um, something I think you can do if you can turn wrenches. All right, the butterflies are very important to get set uh, just in those throttle bores and that they uh, obviously spin uh, with no problems. And um, just want to make sure, too, you got transfer slots in here. I don't know if you can see in there where those vacuum... Uh, this holes are open the vacuum so that uh, off idle you'll be sitting pretty and um, of course too uh, the ported vacuum all of that uh, feeds your vacuum advance on your load so uh, anyway pretty happy with how this came back together and uh, we'll keep going we'll put it up on stilts now and uh, continue some of the rest of it don't forget to put in your brass fitting here and it has a long shaft that goes in there as well all right one thing that some guys miss want to show you to show it to you real quick is um your spark control valve when you remove that um from your 
uh, carburetor um, right inside the bore here. This is a vacuum chamber. See down there, you get to the bottom of the bore. Uh, there's a hole in there. Uh, this is because I removed what I would term as a vacuum jet. And um, this little piece right here needs to be cleaned and of course um, the bore cleaned as well that reinstalled uh, this is open to your um, distributor vacuum advance feed right there and um, it's important to remember to put that back in um, obviously remove it when you're cleaning everything but to put it back in before you install your spark control valve okay we have the carburetor up on stilts now and uh, we're going to put the linkage uh, back together here and a uh, reminder about putting in uh, these two o-rings and this um, orifice right here that kind of just goes between this is just a tube that connects um, your feed to your fuel bowl um, follow the instructions um, dip right we're going to use some mineral oil and um, get those o-rings nice and wet Put them in just like you did with your secondary uh, o-rings just take them in so um, certainly help you and of course make sure too everything's deburred that uh, there's nothing that's going to cut that o-ring holly 4000 is going to have four different check balls three of one size um, obviously these three here and then a larger one let me just point out to you where they go number one um, there's two check balls right here for these secondary feeds. Uh, they're gonna go in each one of these holes uh, before you put um, the fitting in there. I'll show what the fitting looks like real quick and grab one. Um, this fitting here is gonna go in this bore, um, but put the check ball in there first, um, each side. And then there's also gonna be a check ball in the bottom of your bore right there trying to get a light on that um, right in the bottom there with a the keeper that's uh, for your accelerator pump and then uh, your large one the largest of the four is going to go right inside this large hole here and it will have a small keeper as well this is your uh, secondary vacuum chamber and all of that so um, very important to remember when you disassemble this, you've got four second, or excuse me, four check balls to put in, two for the secondaries, one for the accelerator pump right down there, and a, a keeper for that. Um, for your secondaries right here, you got two of these brass fittings. And then of course, also for the secondary vacuum, that large hole right there will take your largest check ball. Right, one other thing to uh, talk to you about with these check balls real quick is that when you do get them installed and you put the keeper in there you really want to shake it and want to hear a little bit of a rattle that tells you that that check ball is loose and that it's able to move freely uh, you don't want that thing seated in there where it can't move at all um, obviously the check ball is there because flow of vacuum one way needs to stop and that check ball um, does so with this secondary chamber and then of course with this one you can hear that rattle there um, that's for the fuel uh, that fuel squirt from your accelerator pump so make sure your check balls you can hear them rattle in both of those chambers